Right, here we go, people. Here we go. Oh, come on, come on, come on. What's up, everybody? This is Robert Ferguson, your nutritionist, a guy who shares because he cares. Now, if you know anyone who is dealing with symptoms of menopause, anyone who is spending tons of money meeting up with hormone replacement gurus and people who say that they got the answer and you're pumping in all those supplements to help with menopause, I am going to give you a really very highly proven example of the power of food as medicine today because with a simple snack, real solid, solid, okay, hear what I'm saying here, solid studies have demonstrated that you can literally improve your situation. I'm talking about reducing those symptoms. You know, we're talking about everything from night sweats, mood swings, hot flashes, sexual dysfunction. This is all a result of what people experience when it comes to menopause. I'm going to share with you three studies today. And you know what? Don't keep this to yourself. Share with other people. Now, if you come in and you catch me live, whether it's on LinkedIn or you catch me on, you know, YouTube, or if you're catching me, wherever you're catching me, wherever you're catching me, I just want to encourage you to share it with other people. Okay. Don't keep it to yourself. Now, everything that I'm going to share with you is brought to you, to you by our detox drop. This is a great way to jumpstart your fitness, jumpstart your fat loss, jumpstart your desire to get your blood pressure under control, to give you a real jump start to get structure so you can crush those cravings. You can learn more about the detox drop by going to the store at our website. You can always contact us as well at dietfreelife.com. And I also want to highlight this reality before I dive into what I'm going to share with you today. I want to highlight the fact that we have a virtual conference right around the corner. It's called Food as Medicine. And I want to invite you to it. It's a conference course and certification all rolled up in one. And I'm going to demonstrate you in the, today in our short time together how you could be eating certain foods. And if you're dealing with menopause, you can bring about some major resolve. And what it will do is it'll make you also wonder, like, why are you just now hearing this? Why is it that, you know, the person that you spent all this money going to didn't share with you, you these studies? Well, regardless, I'm going to share it. And again, I just don't want you to keep it to yourself. And if you want to learn more about our upcoming Food as Medicine course, which is on demand, meaning you don't have to be there uh, live, or you can be there live, or you can do a combination, but you will have full access. I can also tell you that whatever the price is right now, once we complete the course, it's going to double in price. Now, we do that for a few reasons, and then one day in the future, it'll probably come down. But we do that for a few reasons because it will take a lot of energy and, and, and work to get it to you like when you want it, but the people who are in our system who already registered will have full blown access uh, to the replay on demand, all of that. Okay. If you come in later, we have to put in a little bit more work to get you part of the system. It's how the software works. I wish it was different, but we have to charge a little bit more. So register before the event starts so that you save money. All right. Now, Let's get into what I'm feeling we need to talk about. Now, the food that I'm highlighting is soy foods. Now, some of you may have misinformation about soy food, and you may think, hey, I thought soy food was bad. Well, soybean oil is really high in linoleic acid, which can cause inflammation and is a huge problem with so many conditions that come about as a result of consuming a significant amount of soybean oil. These soybeans is not soybean oil. 
We're talking about edamame beans. We're talking about tofu. Uh, we're talking about tempeh. There's no negatives in consuming this. I've been eating soy foods forever since I was 18 years old. Okay, it's been a long time. Trust me on that. My kids, when they weren't getting breast milk, they were drinking soy milk. And they both have turned out just fine. And we enjoy soy products on a regular basis. Now, one of the reasons why you may not be aware of these studies I'm about to share with you is because if you went to a doctor to get help with your hot flashes and there was a food they could recommend that would help you with your hot flashes, they don't make money unless they're selling that food but they can make money on supplements. And I'm not here to crash anyone's business. And maybe those supplements are, are helping somehow. I, I don't know until I look at them. But what I do know is that there's randomized controlled studies done by Harvard, big organizations, credited organizations, double blind placebo control, randomized studies that prove conclusively that you can decrease hot flashes from 79 to 84%. Now in this study that I'm gonna share with you, it's talking about a disease or a condition that's becoming more and more popular. So let me ask you, have you guys ever heard of osteosarcopenia? Have you ever heard of osteosarcopenia? It's becoming more and more known, more and more discussed, and more often talked about. And I was predicting sarcopenia would be talked about around this period of time. So over the next five to 10 years, all of you who are over the age of 60, you're gonna become very familiar with sarcopenia, the same as you are with osteoporosis. But when you, in osteoporosis, we're talking about bone density. Sarcopenia, we're talking about skeletal muscle. And now, we're seeing those happen at the same time. I believe largely because of all these diets people are on, these crazy diets, the ones where they're not eating enough. A lot of these Wegovies and Ozempic and all of those diets are causing people to lose weight on the scale, but some of that weight is coming about primarily of water, skeletal muscle, and sometimes we're seeing bone density decrease. Now, what's interesting about this first one that I'm going to share with you, or I'm sharing with you, is that people who consume these products, soy products, and they had concern with sarcopenia, right, body composition, skeletal muscle, this thing that we're talking about called osteosarcopenia, well, when they consume the soy protein that has the isoflavins in it, okay, those are contained in the soy foods, this study proves or demonstrated that you can improve muscle and bone density quality and, and reduce body weight. Some people consider this a breakthrough in preventing or helping to prevent osteosarcopenia and increase weight gain in the form of obesity. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can read it there. Now, the thing behind that, at the end of that paragraph, PMID, you can go to PubMed, search that number, and it'll take you to the study on why I'm able to recite and share this information with you. Okay? Uh, it's about to get better, you guys. It's about to get better because some of these studies are mind-blowing, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Again, if you haven't registered for the Food is Medicine Conference, do it down. It'll make it easier for all of us because I'm gonna start seeping out information as the weeks go by. Okay, let's look at another study. Oh, before we go into another study, this is what edamame beans look like, okay? When I say soybeans, when I go to my grocery store, Okay. I go to a store often called Vons, which is like a Safeway Pavilion. Um, those That's two different stores. You have the Pavilion, you have Safeway. Uh, I've seen these at Kroger, if that makes sense. I've actually seen these at Walmart, and I've seen these edamame beans where sometimes they're in a frozen area, 
and sometimes they're near the produce where they're not cold but what you can do is you you get them i buy them every week and they're a great snack and what i do is i put them in the microwave warm them up because they're already cooked add a little bit of salt on them and then they're a great snack when i'm sitting there watching a movie or if i'm sitting in the middle of the afternoon looking at something working on something i'll snack on my edamame beans I always get my edamame beans when I go to a sushi restaurant because you can get those before your meal comes. Great appetizer. Uh, but edamame beans is your friend. And you're going to love where I'm going with this because this is big deal. This is a this is a big deal. OK. In this study, which you can find all over the Web, the study showed that nutrition, they call it diet, causes 84 percent drop and troublesome menopausal symptoms no drugs everyone needs to know this and what inspired me to share this today okay and let me just be upfront with you guys well i'm always up front with you what inspired me to share this today was i was talking to one of my clients who's spending all this money going to meet with this person i'm not sure what their clinical title is but they're spending money on these supplements. They're spending money on these testings. They want to relieve themselves of some of these symptoms around menopause and nothing seems to be working. Then all out of nowhere, the blood pressure starts to go up. It's like, is it because of the supplements? I mean, what, what, what's going on here? I came here to get better. I came here for a relief. I came here to like improve things and, and, and it seems like things are getting worse. Well, without drugs the data is clear so everyone would benefit from knowing what i'm sharing with you so in that study if you look at number two there published by the north american menopause society so that means that people are keeping up to date with what's going on in the world right and they're in this space because this was also published in the journal menopause they found a plant-based diet rich in soy reduces moderate to severe hot flashes by 84%. Now that is significant. And I've talked about this in the past. If I have a client who I'm coaching and working with and they mention hot flashes, I'm like, have you ever eaten edamame beans? Make it part of your staple. You could add them to a salad. You could snack on them separately. You could, you know, have them as, as, as it's a great protein source, great snack. But this was randomized. So over a 12 week period. And then 60% of the women became totally free of moderate to severe hot flashes, meaning after 12 weeks, they were better. I mean, this is like. Wouldn't you share this with your friends if you know they have symptoms of, of, of menopause? I hope some of my doctor friends are paying attention because stuff like this just keeps getting missed and people suffer because people aren't aware of it. But there will be no money in recommending you to go buy edamame beans. So it's easy for someone who's the specialist to not mention this because they'd rather put you on some type of med or some type of supplement blend why are, and, and if someone has supplements i would say look if you have a supplement that helps with menopause i would say that's great really i would say that's great outstanding way to go way to make it happen but please tell them about the food relationship to menopause don't just push the supplement without the food this is why, like, when I talk to people who are network marketers, I, I tell them our food is medicine program is great because it fills the gap that so many people have when it comes to, like, wanting to be in the space of advocating better health. Like, with the nutrition people, I would say they could fill the gap by becoming more familiar and knowledgeable of certain supplements. And the supplement people, they can fill the gap by becoming more knowledgeable about food. Don't just push food without being informed about supplements and don't just push supplements without being informed 
about food. But at the him, food as medicine is the king. That's king. And again, if you want to see the whole study, you can go to PubMed. The number is there for you to check it out. And here's a snapshot of the original study. So when you look it up, sometimes it can be a little confusing, but the more you look at studies like this, the better. And again, these people did eat a pretty large plant-based food. So they ate a lot of fruits and vegetables. They stayed away from certain things, but the data is pretty clear on the benefits of edamame bean. And the last one, number three, that I want to share with you is something that came out. It was published by the Harvard Medical School. I find it quite impressive because it wasn't just on helping with muscle, helping with bone, helping with, you know, menopause symptoms. If you look at this study, according to the research, consuming 25 grams of soy protein a day over a six week period lowered what they call unhealthy cholesterol levels. Um, this is significant. The take home is that edamame beans, soy beans are good for everybody. When you go to Japan and other Asian you know, parts of the, of the world, largely populated by Asians and the culture of soybeans, people are living a really long time. Soybeans, yes, are used to create soybean oil and a whole bunch of negatives are around it. But to eat the soybean close to nature, which is in its original state, in its state, that's where you're going to get the benefit. Any questions? Any questions for Roberto Lorenzo Ferguson right now? We talked about it. You got it. I mean, I'm here. You know, I got a few more minutes. So if you guys got some questions, you know, bring it up. You know, I want to give a shout out to Linda Jackson is in the house. What's up, Linda? Catching me on YouTube. Darlene's in the house. Catching me on YouTube. Good to see you, Darlene. Uh, someone's catching me on Facebook. Uh, They're in one of our private groups. Uh, and this person made it clear that they breeze through menopause. So thank you. Work, I'm glad that worked out. Then we got a question about tofu. Is tofu the same? Yes. Soybeans, tofu, uh, tempeh. Uh, I would say if you stick to those, you're good. So edamame beans, they use that to make tofu. So yes, we are good to go. Uh, what's up, Sherry? Sherry? Sherry H is in the house. So I think I did my job. You're aware of it now. You can go back. You can look at the citations. You can look it up. You can have the knowledge and the comfort. But if I was experiencing hot flashes, if I was experiencing any of the symptoms that come with menopause, I would keep edamame beans in my house. And I would make it a staple. And as the study suggests, 12 weeks later, you may, you may stop eating them as often, but yet a whole bunch of people continue to reap the benefits that they established when they started eating the edamame beans that are packed with those isoflavins. This is good stuff, man. And I hope it helps you. You know, not everybody can come to our food as medicine, you know, conference, but this is a great example of how food could be helping people <laughs> and think of all some of you have had symptoms your doctor never brought this up you went to an expert they never brought this up they probably had you doing cohosh and, and and other supplements and maybe like wanted you to do some type of therapy all cost money and they never mentioned the power of edamame beans I consider that an injustice. Don't come to me and tell me that you can help me with my menopause symptoms and only promote what's theorized, some type of supplement, when we have data that is clear. I mean, you guys get what I'm saying? This is clear. It is clear that consuming a small amount of this can be your snack for the day. And it can be a great snack. 
My kids love them. We love them. We love edamame beans. And you can learn how to add garlic to them and just make them just absolutely delicious. You could be experiencing a, an improved relief just by being aware. But when people can't make money recommending you eat food, right? You don't see someone walking around saying, I got a new business. Check out my new gig. Eat broccoli. Like, you don't see that. See, what I would like to see more people do who sell and promote supplements is to connect the dots. Hey, I got this supplement. It helps with blah, blah, blah. And hey, make sure you drink plenty of water is also another reminder to drink more water throughout the day. Like, give them some type of food, some type of benefit that's naturally available everywhere, at least in North America. That's how I see it. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for being here. Uh, again, I want to encourage you to sign up as soon as you can because we, we are, we're on a mission right now. It's, it's happening. Um, I'm getting some real good feedback. There's a lot of people who are really interested in, and getting on board and making it happen um, and just taking their knowledge to the next level. And as a result of that, I um, it just makes me sleep better. It makes me feel good that I'm sharing information that can help people, not just right now, but they can help people for the rest of their life. Food as medicine. That's what it's about. And remember, not everyone will be will define food as medicine the same because it is out there and it is something that is in the healthcare world. They talk about it, but they don't really know about it. It's more of a concept or a theory where we're bringing it home because I doubt if they're encouraging people to eat edamame beans. I doubt if they're even aware of the benefits of edamame beans especially when it comes to menopause for people who are looking for relief. Anyway, I'm Robert Ferguson. I share because I care. And until the next one, I want to say, make it happen. I'll see you guys at the food is medicine and I'll be back tomorrow.